Hello, it's Fred, and welcome back to the Canadian Island Life channel. In this episode, I'm continuing with the renovations in the back half of the cottage and exploring some of the floral life on the island. I'd also like to take a minute and ask that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Without 1,000 subscriptions, I have no hope of monetizing the channel with YouTube and eventually will be forced to stop making these videos. My hope was to get up to 1,000 subscribers after a year, but six months in, I'm still only at 51. Still a lot of work to do, so please like, comment, and subscribe, and share with family and friends. I have one other thing I'd like you to help me with. This spring, I came across many beautiful and unique flowers on the island and could use your help to identify them. I know what some of them are, but some I don't. Have a look at the next series of photos which are labeled in the upper corner and leave a comment if you know what type of flower it is or have any other information about the flower. everybody welcome back it's day two of the hallway renovations you can see I got uh, started with some drywall on the tops I'm just going around putting the bottoms on and then I'll be ready to do some mudding Just like that. Don't have my regular little drywall lifter, so I'm just going to improvise today. Well, things are looking up. Got all the drywall on and things look 10 times better already. 10 times better. Everything's one level, nice and clean looking. That's the way I like it. Just checking to make sure all my nail heads are countersunk. And then I'm gonna start mudding.
Before I start actually taping, there's usually some big cracks and holes like this one down here, a um, couple up there. So I like to go along and fill them up before I start. And what I use is this Durabon 90 and it's a product, it's like a powdered product. You mix it with water, super hard, super adhesion, uh, and it dries in 90 minutes. So that's just what I'm looking for here is I'll put that in right away, let it dry, come back in like an hour, hour and a half. And then I can start taping over top of it without having to worry about this bubbling my tape. Key to it is, fill up the holes, and wipe off the high spots. You wipe off all the high spots, you don't have to do that much sanding. I think I mentioned before, this is uh, super hard, uh, super adhesive stuff. So you want to make sure you don't put too much of it on. Fill up the holes, wipe everything else on top off. So fill the holes, wipe off the excess. See you in 90 minutes. Hey guys, what's up? So I stayed up late last night and I got the second coat on. That way it was nice and dry for this morning. When I got up this morning, just gave it a scrape down with my trawls and now I'm putting on the third coat. With any luck at all, it'll be dry by later on this afternoon and I'll be able to hopefully sand it and clean up this mess. So now I got the bigger trawl out here. You can see I'm just feathering out this joint quite a bit. Oh, 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 a little piece of sliver or something. Try to run my trowel down on, on a bit of an angle and then that sort of makes the mud curl off kind of like uh, like on a snow plow blade, you know how the snow just sort of curls off. If it's straight, you just kind of drag it along, but if you kind of do that, it sort of helps get rid of some of the gouges.
And if you get some gouges, you can usually come back a little bit later on and just sort of touch those up. Sometimes it's easier to do that once this stuff is set up a little bit than it is to try and keep going over it and over and over it. Looks like we're putting on a lot of plaster and kind of, kind of I am, but it's a lot easier to feather it out wider and have it nice and smooth, you know, and, and to cover all of this rough stuff here with a wider swath of plaster and then just get a light skip sanding over top. It's easier to do that than to have a little hump that you gotta really, really, really sand a lot. So maybe it looks kind of uh, daunting doing that, but it is, it's not that bad. Finally ready to get this floor put in. Just got a little wee bit of glue left over from the other bedroom. Plus another one that I brought up from home. This should be pretty simple, right? Yeah, it went okay in the last room. Don't see why this should be a problem. I could have started right at the end with the glue and worked my way all the way over here and then started laying carpet, but with my luck, I would have had a cat jump through it and then I'd have problems. Mm. Sitting on the product. Blue side up. Well, looks like we're moving right along here. Not such a big deal, only about seven or eight pieces go in here, so it shouldn't be overly difficult. I'm gonna glue up the rest of this here because the cat is sound asleep somewhere else. So we got no worries about trespassing there. For a moment, throw a few pieces down, and we'll see if I gotta put any more on. Ta da!
probably should have a roller to do this, but such a little for such a little job. Don't think it's really necessary. There, this is getting exciting. Wall to wall broad loom. <laughs> But you know, in a cottage, this is probably the perfect thing because the floors are so up and down and they're so spongy. If you tried to put click lock down here, it would just unclick itself as it, you know, you walked in the valleys and whatnot. It would be a disaster, I'm pretty sure. Don't think I need to cut this one. I think I can just Put it in under there, it could be wrong, but I'm gonna set it down. If I do have to trim it, it'll be such a small amount that I should be able to just do it in place. Hopefully. Awesome. So I just got one little wee piece here that I gotta do, and that's it. I'm done with this hallway flooring. The next thing will be to uh, get the trim painted, paint the walls. Normally I would have painted the walls first, but I don't have the paint yet. Paint the walls, put the trim on, and the hall's done. <laughs>